Hello all, and welcome to Miss Martin's Classroom. Today's podcast will be featuring a realistic fiction middle grade novel. There is no cheat sheet to surviving your first day at a new school. 12-year-old Maria Luisa, or Malu as she is better known and prefers, immediately gets off to a terrible start by getting dress coded in her punk rock attire and inadvertently annoying the Queen Bee popular girl all on her first day at Posada Middle School as the new kid. With a tricky social status to maintain and her father a thousand miles away, Malu tries to gather a group of misfits and outcasts to start a band with the hopes of carving out a place of belonging for herself and for her new like-minded friends. Dad says punk rock only comes in one volume, loud. So when I slipped my headphones over my ears, I turned the music up until bass strings thumped, cymbals hissed, and guitar strings squealed like they were having a conversation with each other. Mom says my music is a racket, but to me, it's like the theme music to my life, and it's always helped me concentrate. I ripped a page out of a magazine, then squeezed my fingers inside the blue plastic holes of an old pair of school scissors. It was a little too close for comfort, but my real scissors, the ones made of steel with a black handle, were packed away, and I had to get this done. It was now or never. I maneuvered the blades carefully around the page. I liked the feeling of the scissors slicing through the glossy pages. Especially when I got to the very last snip and freed the exact piece I wanted. The word I cut out stuck to my sweaty fingertips and I carefully placed it on the floor where my zine supplies were spread out around me. There were sheets of unlined paper and old magazines Dad had given me an uncapped purple glue stick, and a folder so fat with clip art that the paper spilled out of the opening. The yellow Whitman sampler box that held my colored pencils, stickers, and scraps of paper still smelled of chocolate, but no longer contained a delicious assortment of candy. While hunched over the magazine, I looked for more letters to cut out. A pair of leather-sandaled feet suddenly appeared. I looked up at Mom, who stood over me in her HOA Mexico t-shirt, in a knee-length gauzy skirt. Her lips moved, but her words were no match for my music. Finally, she pointed to her ears. Super Mexican strikes again, I said, pulling the headphones down around my neck. Super Mexican is my nickname for mom. She's always trying to school me on stuff about Mexico and Mexican-American people. I think her main goal in life is to make me into her ideal Mexican-American senorita. Plus, she likes to wear those embroidered dresses and skirts, and wraps called rebozos. I call this her super Mexican uniform. Mom acts like it annoys her, but I think she secretly likes the nickname. Funny, Mom said. You all done packing? I guess. I glanced over at the pile of boxes and bags next to the door. Mom told me to bring everything I needed, but not to overpack, which didn't make any sense. My room wasn't my room without my things. There were only a few belongings I decided to leave behind, and they became the only signs that I'd ever lived here. I felt like someone had taken a giant pink pearl eraser and rubbed me right out of the picture. Great, Mom said. Your dad will be here in an hour, so get ready. I am ready. I looked down at my t-shirt and shorts. Mom's eyes moved over my clothes with their super-scanning powers, looking for holes, stains, and other un like offenses to point out. But before she could comment on anything, she noticed the magazine I was cutting. Malu, that's not my new magazine that just came in the mail, is it? I gave Mom an unapologetic smirk to let her know that it was. I'll take that, thank you very much, she said, holding out her hand. If you need magazines, check the recycling bin. Yes, ma'am, I said, and saluted her before I handed down my copy of Bon Appetit. I put my headphones back on and grabbed a blank sheet of paper. I had to get the zine done before Dad came to pick me up. I started making zines earlier this year when I discovered Dad's collection of punk music zines from his high school days. Zines are self-published booklets, like... Homemade magazines, and they can be about anything, not just punk. There are zines about all kinds of topics, like video games and candy and skateboarding. 
A zine can be a tribute to someone or something you love and nerd out about or a place to share ideas and opinions. Dad said they're also a good way to write about what you're thinking or feeling, kind of like a diary that you share with people. Mine are mostly about stuff I find interesting or want to know more about. But ever since Mom told me we were moving, a lot of my zines have become about that. Mom made it seem like this move was no big deal because we'd be back when her new job contract expired. But two years might as well be forever. Two years meant all of middle school, and I couldn't even imagine what two years away from Dad would feel like. It was a very big deal. So for the next hour, I wrote and cut and pasted a final plea to Mom. I glued the last letter onto a page just as the doorbell rang to signal that my time was up. The first roll of punk seriously rocks, pun completely intended. 12-year-old punk rocker Malu has to navigate her identity at a new school and in a new home in this fun story with themes of friendship, finding your place, and learning to rock out like no one's watching in The First Rule of Punk by Celia C. Perez. This is truly a series you can simply sink your teeth into. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also check out my hashtag MSM ready to read and follow me on Instagram at ms underscore martins underscore class for more new books and fun lessons that are sure to engage you and your kiddos. Be sure to tune in next week for my next Book Talk Tuesday podcast and please comment below if you've read this book or another book by the author. Thanks for watching!